Good morning, job man champions. I hope everyone is well today. So really looking forward to today's webinar. Um, and it is a great, great topic for today. Um, operations and workflows are what we'll be covering. And they really are the core foundation of how job man works and the, the fastest and quickest benefit to your business for using a software. So today we'll be covering operations and workflows. Um, primarily the discussion will revolve around uh, what, what operations and workflows are, how they link, how they work, and what are the parts of the software they touch so you can get the best form of automation. Um, we will be running through some slides which, which give a really good um, basic understanding of, of that information. So if you are re-watching this video and you want to utilize that information, um, they will be really helpful just to get you up and running and get you started. And then we'll be doing a live demonstration in the software um, of some workflows, some examples, how to change them. So the objective for today is really to give you a good understanding uh, and grasp on operations, workflows, functionality, and how they link in the software, um, their use cases, how to set them up, how to change them. Obviously, the, the point to uh, an ERP is continual level of improvement, so how we can use these to then uh, improve your, your business flow and, and give you a better return on investment, more efficiencies, productivity, et cetera. Um, how to change a workflow. So if you update a workflow, how can we change that live in, in jobs or leads that we're already doing? And then how to convert a lead to a job using workflows and their automation. I think that's a good key, key starting point um, <clears throat> for the software. So the big question that, that most people would ask is why are they so important? And foundationally, uh, in the next couple of slides, we're going to show you why operations are the foundation of the software, how they link everything, how they link quoting to tasks, to labor centers, agenda screens. Um, and then, of course, having that, that time measured versus those operations builds the foundation of your reporting, uh, et cetera. But how easy it is to quickly start getting that information into JobMan so you can get that return. Workflows are the sequential organization of operations. So simply put, how does work flow through your manufacturing business, whether it be a lead flow, so that the discussion with clients and, and how, uh, how that is expected to progress for your business to, to optimize the amount of leads you can convert into jobs, and then the job management side. What is the best order in which we can do these processes or operations to make sure that every job goes out on time uh, and as expected as to be delivered um, and where we can measure and track those operations in that flow so that you can then increase that productivity. The first step to, to understanding any benefit is, of course, understanding the problem and what the real-time cost of that problem is. And that's, that's something JobMan at its very core is excellent at. So if we were to, um, I guess, simplify this down into to a nice, nice, easy connection so you can see it in the software. And really, this is the, the, the primary point where everyone comes to JobMan is understanding and improving job management and lead management. So understanding this basically opens up the whole software to what it can achieve for your company. So you can see uh, at a very straightforward level, we can put operations or labor into quotes. And in this example, we've got a, a couple of hours of CNC code production. So most businesses manufacturing otherwise would produce CNC code for their machining operations these days. So even just that, that example is, is pretty universal across most manufacturing sectors. So I can put two hours in. There's many ways this can happen. We'll be, we'll be covering this in later topics. Um, but for now, we'll just keep it really nice and simple. I've got two hours in my quote. When the quote moves forward into an accepted job, those operation times are pulled from the quote into the job. So now instead of talking about estimates, we're talking about actuals. You didn't have to do anything, just add, add that labor time to a quote. That operation time will also start auto filling up your capacity. So again, without you really having to do much, the software is doing its job. And as you take on more jobs and more leads uh, and more operational time, it will start deferring and conferring with the information around your, um, your capacity in those operational areas. Um, 
probably a, a good moment to, to to give you some other words for operations, just so that they're they're really clear as to what they are. Operations at their foundation are the processes by which you do every day, the key processes, not the tasks. Tasks are things you do um, in relation to that process, but the operation itself is the actual actual achievement, the thing we're trying to achieve in the process. So a really good example would be cutting, whether that be uh, you know machine cutting or or hand cutting or something like that. The operation to build the thing you manufacture may require cutting. So cutting is the operation. And the final result of that breakdown is because we have time, in our quote, we have an estimate, that time is pulled into our operations inside our job management flow, which is then tested versus our capacity. We can then have the team measure their time. So in this instance, we we estimated it would take two hours of, of detailed drafting or CNC co-production, and we managed to get the task done in an hour. So technically, we're we're fifty percent more productive on this job, which of course impacts um, at a foundational level your profit. Other areas that this then reaches out and touches, and it's such a such a beautiful spiderweb as it comes into the software, is then those operations can be linked to your agenda screens. So this is how we communicate what jobs and what leads and, and things we want done to the team. And again, once these are set up, you don't have to do anything. Job man's doing all this for you. All you did was add some hours to a quote and then bring that quote from an accepted lead into a job. And now we've got these hours coming into our agenda screen, which then means we've got a nice order of operations for our team to manage. So we're keeping everything on process. And they can interact with the software, whether it be via the office user mode or the kiosk mode to bring up uh, this, this screen here where they can start measuring their time and complete operations. So the beauty of JobMan is that it really is an automated system. It's not you sitting there all day with a Google spreadsheet managing your workflows and your operations. Once they're built, and once they're, they're working for your business, JobMan is doing the rest of the work and then the team interacts. To, to measure time, to get these operations done, and then, of course, complete them in a digital sense so that you can track and see at all times where every one of your leads and jobs up to, which is awesome. I think 99% of people who come to, to JobMan, that's the foundation, the very first thing they want to get right in their business. So we want to improve our workflows and we want to know our capacity. And here it is in a couple of easy steps. The other thing it will do is it will also filter those operations into things like your target calendar. So now you have an easy filterable system by which you can see key critical operations in your business and the dates over the course of a day, week or month when you expect them to be done. So for a lot of businesses, a critical operation would be dispatch or install. That's the end of the job. That's the bit where we, we get whatever we're manufacturing out into the market so we can be paid. So having that, that operation of installation or, or dispatch um, built into your software will allow you to map that process keep everybody on track, and then, of course, using utilising this amazing tool such as the target calendar to see when those critical dates need to be met and what your month's going to look like. And, again, all of this is just happening naturally with the software once it's been set up. So you're not having to manage this every day. Job man is providing the information you need to, to manage your jobs. So uh, a couple of, couple of good discussion points here um, for operations. Uh, one of the common questions we get is what is the differentiator between an operation and a task? So an operation is the core. It's the reportable core of the, the manufacturing or lead process. Um, so as I said, you might have an operation, but it may have multiple tasks linked to it. So a really good example would be assembly. Most, most manufacturing processes have an assembly as part of their process, whether you make kitchens or bench tops or fences um, or, or steel. Once the bits are cut or welded or, or bended or folded, they need to be assembled together. So assembly is the operation. But depending on your business, there may be a number of tasks that then link to that operation. So ideally... Uh, you you might have uh, an operation, for example, if you if you build kitchens, where it could be assembly carcass, so the inners, and then there's another task which is assemble doors. So that's the taking the hardware and putting the door faces on, which are quite often a different material to the original carcass. So you would have the two tasks, which would be assemble um, carcass 
and assemble doors. However, they both link to the primary operation, which is assembly, because ultimately the point of what you're trying to achieve is to see how uh, how long your assembly is taking. Uh, you're not so worried about the individual tasks in there. It's more the total time spent by your team on that operation, because that's what we quote on. Whether you quote on it directly, like you, you quote directly an amount of cutting time, assembly time, install or dispatch at a very simplistic level, um, or you have that that time hidden in products, which is one of the other superpowers of Jobman, which we'll be covering in another webinar. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> the key is I want to know that based on the size of this job, it might be, say, 20 hours of assembly. And then I want to take that time, put it out to the team, so now they know roughly how long that job should take, Number one, but two, when completing and measuring the time taken on those tasks linked to those operations will give me the data I need for my report to tell me, I estimated 20 hours, how long did it take, including stuff ups. So that's that's a very important key to job man as well. A lot of businesses would be pretty comfortable with the idea, you know, if you've got a lot of experience with your manufacturing process, you could probably tell me off the top of your head roughly how long it would take to manufacture that. You've done it plenty of times before and you'd have a good idea. Um, but it's not until you get raw, live, actual data that you can start comparing that information and then improving the process, which, of course, then lends itself to improved productivity and, most importantly, improved profitability. So the key, key to our operations in our system, which we're going to show in the demonstration, are start dates and target dates. And this is a, a good one to mention early um, because operations in workflows need those dates for the system to become transparent for your team. And I'll show you how easy it is. It's very simple once it's set up and once you see it all flowing together, it'll make a lot of sense, a lot of flexibility here, but that's the, the core crux of what is an operation. Really simple, it's the reportable part of your, um, your processes inside jobs and leads. So what then is a workflow? Uh, the workflow, as mentioned previously, is the sequential order in which we expect these operations and tasks to be done. So a workflow is the culmination of all those tasks and operations in an order that makes sense. So I'll give you an example. Uh, generally speaking, most companies can't purchase order the raw materials required for a job until They've gone through the process of detailing or production detailing or drafting, whatever you call it in your, in your manufacturing sector, um, to produce the optimised list of materials. So we have a general list that comes in from the job. Um, however, now we can nest some of those materials together for improved cutting, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So doing that process first is really important. So a workflow is putting the, the operations and the tasks in the right order so that the team A knows how it's going to, how the flow is going to, happen uh, but b and probably more importantly they're going to understand what needs to be done before something else can be done um, which is very important so we, we can't cut until the materials are in we can't assemble until the, the the base materials have been cut or welded for example so putting it in that order is really important keeps everyone on the same page stops things going out of whack and it also provides visibility then so you can easily see with a workflow your critical dates. And that's what we'll demonstrate today. So you can see how you can use the power of Jobman simply by using those operations and all the link points throughout your software to quickly and easily generate the expected lead time dates based on the size of the job. So we're, we're taking the guesstimate work out of your business, digitizing it and putting it in one place. Uh, but foundationally, that's what a workflow is. So I think uh, I didn't want to yammer on too, too much on the early side. I think this is a really good subject where uh, it's best seen visually. So I'm going to dive in now into the software. Um, one of the fantastic points about Jobman is depending on the industry you picked when you signed up um, will mean there will be some seeded data in your site all ready to go for some, from some standardized operations and workflows. So one of the great things about this is you do not have to build it from scratch, although I'm going to show you how you can uh, so that you, if you do want to change things or modify things, they become really clear. So we're going to flow through and how to find, create, and update your operations and workflows, then how to change them if necessary, and of course, all importantly, taking those leads that we discussed in, in the previous webinars and how do we take that information and push those into the jobs so we get our job management system can start working. So let's dive in. 
So we're back in our, our lunch and learn, uh, and you can already see some of the information starting to populate uh, from just some of that background setup we've got. There's our agenda screen with that drafting um, operation. Recently, I've put some time against it, so it appears in recent tasks. So you can see just by, by very simple filtration of information in the system, it's job man's already doing its job. It's already putting it together. All it did was add a quote into a lead, into a job. So let's start with the most important part is where is this information in the system uh, so that it can be modified, updated and edited. And you'll find it in two to three areas inside the settings. The core foundation makes sense, workflows. So we can go into settings, into workflows, and these are broken down into your different types of workflows. We're going to concentrate primarily today on job workflows because I think that's the, the main reason why people come to JobMan. And then once you sort of understand job work workflows, utilizing that information for leads then becomes very easy as well. So you can start to improve your front-end processes, not just your back-end processes. So I can click on this workflow. And right now I've got one workflow. Nice and easy, it's a standard workflow. Um, and this is my default workflow. So every single one of my jobs, this is the one that will appear. Now, workflows, as you can see, are broken down into four key elements. The first is statuses. The second is steps. The third are operations. And then the fourth is tasks. To simplify matters, I'm just going to focus on the two key points today, which are statuses and operations. This software works fine with just statuses and operations. Uh, you don't need to worry too much about steps and tasks, but I will mention what they're useful for and you can you can see how they're relevant to your business. But this system is designed to work very simply with statuses and operations. So statuses is where we're up to in the process. So this is the first part of um, mapping, uh, mapping our workflows. And that is to say, how do we break those processes down? Now, this can be as complicated or as simple as you want. For most, most production uh, of manufacturing, there will be a starting point I've called it pre-production. You can call it whatever you like, but pre-production makes a bit of sense. This is where we do a few of those tasks where we're not yet manufacturing, uh, but we're, we've got some things that need to be done before we can start manufacturing. For example, the detailing and the purchase order and creation of CNC code. Um, my second status is machining, and then that moves into manufacture, which is the assemble, out to my critical dates, which is the installation. It's a very simple flow, um, but it makes a lot of sense. Everything's covered as I start jobs. All of my operations are available to me. It, work, it, it will work for 90% for of my jobs. There are also important other areas that you can put into statuses for, for JobMan, and these can be things such as um, maintenance or reworks. So that's a good use of a workflow rather than have a, a massive long workflow. You can have a very small workflow, which covers anything, any small issues that may go wrong in your manufacturing process. Uh, and of course, it's important to have a job close status so that once, once jobs are absolutely complete, they can move into that status. And then that's how we filter information in the software. So statuses are basically just your headings, nice and easy. Then within statuses, uh, we have operations. And those operations... Here's, here's my example from before, is create CNC code. That's the operation. Uh, I have a staff member or a team member who does that, uh, and that's what they work on. And as part of my quoting, I include an amount of allowance time to cover that for my product production. So uh, inside your workflows, you'll create some estimated times. These are, these are not massively important. Don't, don't worry about them too much. Uh, the reason they're there is just so that if I if I was to run this flow and I want to test the system, I've got some times in there. I've got some average times. If you have a business that does a lot of repetitive work, like you, have, you sell a handful of products and you know those times really well, you can put those in the workflow and then basically every time you come into workflow, those times are going to be correct. The important thing to understand is that these operational times will change with the accepted quote. So whilst I've got 30 minutes on this operation here, in my quote, it was actually two hours because a lot of CNC co-production and drafting. So in my in my example shown previously, those are the two hours that came in over the 30 minutes. And that's how JobMan is able to expand and detract all of your jobs. It can give you a real understanding of what's going on. So there's our operations. Now, linked to those operations are the tasks. 
Now, in most most cases, for a lot of businesses, the easiest way to use job man is simply entitle the task the same as the operation. So it makes a lot of sense at a, at a quick glance, you can say, yep, what is this operation? It's create CNC code. What's the task they're doing? They're creating the CNC code. The reason why you can change the, the task names but link them to uh, singular operations is, as mentioned before, you might have a number of tasks that are important to complete that operation. And tasks can be things like put on safety gear. It's not something you need from a reporting point of view. You don't care how long it takes them to put on those safety glasses. But for HR in your business, before they start utilizing machine or cutting, we actually need them to tick that box off. So that's what a workflow is. It's that workflow management. I need you to tick these operations off in this order in order to be able to complete our manufacturing process as expected. So that's a perfect example of where I could have a task. And I could put that task in and have it set up link to that operation so that it appears on the agenda screen for the cutter. So let's do that together. So it gives you a really good idea of how easy it is to manipulate this system. So we're going to create the task, which is put on safety glasses. And I'm going to link it to the operation of cutting. Reason being is it's the, the machine operator that needs to do this task. And if you think back to our link, I want this on their agenda screen. I want it taking up their capacity time. I want all those links to come in. And when they're measuring their total time from putting on their safety glasses to actually doing the cutting, to completing the cutting and moving on to the next process, it all wraps into one for my reporting. Uh, I need one person to do it. It's a very quick and easy task, but I just need them to check it off. So target date calculations are very important. I'm going to show you this in the live flow in a minute so you get an understanding of how start uh, start calculations and target calculations work. But from a setup point of view, the point to target date calculations is how quickly do we want to move through this process? So in this, in this example, basically as soon as I can start cutting CNC, I need to put my glasses on. So I want this process due the same day as the previous task. If the task that you're about to, to do or the operation you're about to handle for your workflow has a requirement of time, there's a lag between the two operations. So if, say, for example, the previous operation here was to create CNC code, and within your business, usually <clears throat> there's a three-day lag before you would actually kick off the cutting and assembly because that allows time for purchase orders to arrive, et cetera. You can set this up and you can say, make this task due three days after the previous task. So when job man is setting up your target date calculations, if, for example, the create CNC code was set to today, it would automatically wait three days before putting in the next task. So this is how we can build that nice estimated flow. Now, it's important to note that if tasks are being completed faster than your, your standardized workflow, they will still appear on the agenda screens. So they will still come through. So people can work faster than your flow. If everything's humming along, everything's working beautifully, it's not a problem. We can still move forward. But these are there just to allow enough time to make sure our processes are handled uh, in a standardized format. So in this particular case, um, we're going to set that as due previous task. Requires all previous tasks. So the requires by is the way in which we tell the software um, how to make sure we manage this flow correctly. For 99% of your tasks, you can just leave this at the default, which is all previous tasks. I need you to uh, detail or draft before I can purchase order, before I can cut, before I can install, uh, sorry, assemble, before I can quality check, before I can dispatch, before I can install. Makes sense. Each of those things before it have to be done. However, in a lot of cases, there are certain tasks in your workflow that can be done concurrently. And this is a very common question we get. Okay, Cam, I understand. I can see I've got my workflow, I've got my operations. It's, it's in the order I want. But sometimes there are operations or tasks that can be done at the same time. So this is one of those excellent features where you can come in and you can say, okay, in order to start the cutting, uh, I don't actually need the CNC code to be produced, which is not true in any way, shape or form, but just as an example. Um, so what that means is I can take this operation and I can say, in order to, to start this operation, all I actually need is the purchase ordering to be done. So once that purchase ordering task is ticked off, bang, the create CNC code task is still there. It still needs to be complete as part of your job flow. However, we can sort of jump it and the cutting team can immediately start. A good example of this would be <clears throat> concurrence. 
So I'm going to use the my keep going with my kitchen example because it makes a lot of sense to a lot of manufacturers, even if you're not in the in the cabinet making industry. Um, at the same time <clears throat> that you are cutting the board for your carcasses and your doors, you can also be cutting the bench tops. Bench tops aren't reliant on this information. As long as they're well templated and you have that done, they can be done at the same time. So rather than have my bench tops rely on cutting and edging to be ticked off, I can simply set them up to be happening at the same time. Once purchase ordering and CNC code is done, we can start cutting and we can start producing bench tops. They can work independently side by side, thus narrowing our flow and improving our efficiency. But in this particular case, we definitely want all previous tasks. There is an option there as well for none. So if you have certain operations or tasks in the flow that are kind of independent of everything, you still need them checked off for most jobs. Um, however, they are kind of independent of the whole process. You can set a date to them manually. You don't need the, the automation of flow to come out. A good example of this might be um, check measure or confirm specs with clients. Uh, this is a, a task that can be done independently, can virtually be done at any point in the, in the flow. However, it's sort of critical because once you have that confirmation of detail, that's when the rest of the manufacturing process can kick off from there. So that would be a good example of, of the use of none. But to begin with, I encourage all clients, just set everything to all previous tasks, keep your flow nice and even, and then run some jobs. And the beauty of job management is you'll quickly and easily be able to run these jobs, get your data, and start improving your processes. And then the last part, which is extremely important, is job types. So job types... I'm just going to create that, that task for you so you can see how easy it is. Um, job types are the ability then to define our flow a little bit better. So whilst it makes a lot of sense to manufacturers say, okay, I've got this, this flow and it's my standard job flow. And in every job I do, I need to do things like cutting, edging, assembly, and install. Those are key operations that happen all the time. However, depending on the type of job I'm doing, there may be extraneous operations, which you may handle internally or externally, it doesn't really matter, which are only relevant to some jobs. I'll give you two really good examples because I think these are really important. Number one, two-pack painting. So if you do, uh, or, or in other industries, it would be powder coating or sandblasting. Again, it doesn't matter if you do this internally or externally. If a job requires that to be done as part of that process, we need to put that, in, that allowance into our flow. However, we don't want it in every job because not every job has two pack painted doors or requires powder coating or galvanizing. Sometimes you're simply producing a raw fence or a raw uh, raw material setup um, and they don't require it. The, the, the specs for the job for the client is they just want the, the raw based production and they will handle that themselves. So utilizing job types allows us to have those operations come in and out of the flows. So job man has the smarts to be able to handle different jobs. And I've got a perfect example here for you, which is the send parts for painting for two-pack doors in, as part of my flow. So I can set this up and I can change this type. And this type I only need if I select painted. So now when I create a standard job, these painting operations to send them and receive them will only happen if I've selected the painted job type which means in all my jobs where I don't select it, I'm not wasting valuable time and allowance in my flow um, for critical dates such as installation by having this in here. And to help you out so you can always see what's going on there, one of the little symbols will pop up there, which will show you what these are linked to. Again, to begin with, just try to put everything in your workflow, make sure you've got everything covered, and then you can start narrowing and detailing down. But that's how we do that. Now, the other thing I can do here, because it's a nice and easy system, really flexible to, to help you build your workflows, is everything in here is virtually drop and draggable. And what Joe Man will do is once it's saved, it will recalculate these days based on where I put that. So there's my new task. It's under the right status, machining. I've linked it to the operation cutting, so it'll show up my agenda screens. It'll take part of my, um, my capacity and it will formulate part of my reporting. And I've dropped and dragged and just put that in there. And now my workflow makes sense again. Create the CNC code, come in, and then I need you to put on your safety glasses and start cutting. Really easy, really easy. And I think it's very helpful for most businesses that uh, there are some examples in the software ready to go. So that's a, a really good way of being able to, to modify your workflow. So even if the workflow you get with JobMan doesn't make sense for your business, you can see it's really easy to start changing things. And where operations are similar, rather than delete them 
our recommendation is always just change some of the information to make sense to your business. So I don't call it site install, I just call it install. It's how we all refer to it commonly in our business. So we're going to call it install. Uh, for you, you might not call it detailing, you might call it production drafting or drafting. Just change the name and now the workflow will start to feel like yours. The other things that are really important to note when building out your manufacturing flow is it's not just the manufacturing itself, it's the processes around the manufacturing. For example, payments having operations around payments. So you can have an operation called accounts and then I can build tasks into my flow to make sure that when certain operations have been ticked off, for example, my edging has been ticked off, I could have a task in here for progress payment. And that will go onto an accounts agenda screen and the, the team in accounts can see that. Go, oh, okay, yep, so job number one, two, three, four uh, has finished this part of the manufacturing process. Okay, send the second invoice. Job one, two, three, four has now finished all of these operations. Now I can send the final payment. So we're ready to go out and close off this job because everything's been done. So that's the other advantage of flows. It's not just the actual direct process itself. It's all of the other tasks and operations to make sure that that is complete. Now, top tips and tricks. We like to include these in our webinars. Rather than modify the workflow in the system, our recommendation to everybody is to make a copy of it. So copy that workflow, update it, and then change the name. And we're going to change the name to our lunch and learn job workflow. Save. And now I can start playing with it. The reason we make that recommendation is because if I stuff something up in here and I, I start changing types or I start moving things around and I look at it and I, and I, at the end of it, I'm like, oh, that, that is not what I was trying to achieve at all. I can easily delete this one, come back. I've still got a workflow to work with and I can move forward uh, and I can make those changes and I can, I can change this as much as I want. I can now set that to my default, et cetera, without ever having to worry about losing this. Now, if you do ever get into that point, you accidentally delete it, don't worry, it's not massively hard to start this again from scratch. Um, so long as you have those operations and statuses in the system, it's very easy to build. And for some companies, it does make sense. They look at our workflow and they go, that makes absolutely no sense to my company. I am going to build it from scratch to really match my company. So that's really important. The other thing to note, as I said, is we've got multiple different types of workflows. Um, so we have, you know, lead flows this is the beginning of the operation. That's what I'm going to show you today as we pull through so I can showcase um, target dates and start dates and the links. Um, but yeah, it's important to also have a lead flow in your system. Even if lead management is not the top of mind reason you came to job man, it's going to very quickly become a powerful asset and tool in your business. Uh, even if it's very simple, you do not need this, this huge workflow. You can simplify your system to be, I entered the lead, I talked to the client, I sent them a quote and it became job awarded. Give you a four step flow. But that in itself is enough to start providing data to your business uh, around, you know, how many how many leads are coming in? How many of those leads are we winning from accepted quotes? Put in some reasons as to why you're not winning them as well. Put that in the lead flow so that if I tick off these operations and then it goes into the job refuse status, because the client changed their mind or went with someone else or the quote was too expensive, I can now report on that. Uh, operations are the key foundation to your reporting. Can't say that enough. So that's the superpower there. So all that's making sense. Of course, we have some good examples in here of hopefully what uh, what you can do with the software. And this can even be more complicated again if you need it to be. The last point I'm going to make is in this area. For workflows, because you've got job types and lead types, it really helps you narrow down uh, the user case of having a big flow but then breaking it down into smaller chunks. And keep in mind, they can be multiple chunks. So in our, our standard job workflow example, I've got painted operations in there. I might also have stone. So if most of my jobs, 80% of my jobs use laminate tops, that's fine. It runs through my normal process. But in the 20% use case where I have two pack painted doors and I use stone bench tops, I can tick on those two job types and that will expand or detract my flow, which is very important. There is a good methodology for a lot of companies, however, <clears throat> to build a handful of workflows. So, And JobMan can handle it. The whole idea behind the system is you should have a couple of different workflows. And I'll give you a really good example. Uh, for most companies, they, they tend to break their work up into a couple of different types. Uh, residential slash private, so people walking on off the street. 
versus builder or, or uh, ag or mining, basically contract clients that you do a lot of work with over time, and then commercial. So you might build, rather than have those split up into types, although you can if there's only very small variances, you might want to actually build three different workflows for those three different clients. Remember, everything you do now, once it's in the system, it can be used over and over and over, and it's improving processes uh, continuously. So this is a really important part. We're spending a little bit of time setting this up now. We'll save you thousands of hours in the future uh, and really give you a massive return investment of software. So the difference between these, uh, these two types might be things that are quite important. So for my commercial lead flow, it's not just a standard client where I have a chat to them, I, I create the estimation, and then off we go. They're happy with the estimation or quote. We move forward. There's other processes that need to be have to be done commonly with this type of client, including things like getting the PO signed off, contracts, specs. So these are all the operations and tasks we can put into our workflow to make sure they don't get missed. There's a lot of transparency. And again, everything happens in the right order. Job man's like a, like a digital operations or, or project manager working your business. Never, never falls asleep, never gets tired. You know, it's always there in the background doing its job, which is absolutely fantastic. So let's let's very quickly um, show you what the impact of that is so that it, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, we're just going to grab contacts. So you've got your contacts in from your previous webinars, and I'm going to create a new lead, and I'm just going to show you where some of that information is and then how that impacts. Uh, so I can link it to a person. This is the first point at which types become important. So as a builder work, commercial work, residential, I can build as many, many different types as I want. Let's keep it nice and simple. So there's a private client that's walked in. Um, give it a description so that if your company doesn't refer to lead numbers or job numbers, job man will create them automatically. We've got that that happening. Um, webinar. <clears throat> come in. I don't have to fill out too much information here, although there is a lot of good information you can use, uh, as previously mentioned. So now, just by a couple of clicks, John Man has done its job. It's chosen the type, it's put in my flow, and all my expectations are ready to go for my company. All I need to do to tell the team how to move this forward is to kick it off. And there are two important dates or styles of dates in job man. Start dates and target dates. Start dates are what most people would utilize for lead management. When did the client walk through the door? When do we expect all the processes be done, to be done as part of that lead management so this can turn into a job? Choose a start date, hit save. And this is very, very foundational to the use of the software. And all that information I've told job man now becomes live. Job man does all these calculations for you based on what you've told it. You've told it that I want this to start or be done within a day of this being done, which means as soon as the showroom consultation is complete, those three next tasks can appear on the agenda screen and move forward. Even better, based on kicking that off today, I know that in the next two weeks, this should be a job. If tasks start getting missed, it's very easy for me to tell in the software when things are not being complete, Things aren't running on track, and we can pull pull the team back in the line and get everything on track. So this is this is that key link. Just by building those operations and having that flow, a couple of clicks, I can now start managing my business. So that's the first part. Is definitely how to to, to build that. The second part is target dates. Now, target dates make a lot more sense in jobs. So that's what I want to do today. And I, I think as part of this, it's really important um, that we give you the idea of how to actually move leads into jobs. Because the common question we get, okay, I've built these two beautiful flows. I've got a lead flow and a job flow. I'm, I'm understanding where we're coming from. We've got our operations. We've got people measuring time, keeping everybody on the same page. This is amazing. You've changed my life. But I now need to move all those leads into jobs because that's where I manufacture. That's where I make my money. So imagine I'm not cheating the system. I was going through and your team members are coming in here and completing these tasks. I'm going to cheat the system a little bit, however. We're just going to complete all those tasks to say, yep, we've finished everything as relevant to this lead. Um, and you can come in here, you can see things will start getting time stamped and date stamped, but also who's done them. So that's very important information. It's how we start to build our reporting. But now you can see by choosing and completing all the tasks and operations in the previous statuses, job man automatically moves this into the job awarded status. Ready to go. So that's the beauty of this software is it comes in. You don't need to be updating statuses. Job man's going to do it naturally. So that's how you know live at all times where everything is up to. 
Now I'm in the actual job award status and you can change the name as this. There's settings and details. Please do check the, the information packs and, and, and help menu if you need some more direct and specific information around um, modifying and setting these up. But there's plenty of information around how to utilize statuses. But now I'm in the correct status. I can create a job. If I had a quote, I could link it here. And this is how I would pull through that time and materials. And that's certainly something we'll be covering in a future webinar, but that's that's the important part is that's how I made that link. So in that example, on those slides, I made a quote, I had put that time in, I followed my lead process, I completed the lead, I started the job, I linked the quote, boom. There's all my time coming through. There's your automation, which means rather than now these tasks be my estimated time, these would be actual times pulled through. So there would be an actual amount of production drafting, say three hours, an actual amount of, of cutting, uh, an actual amount of install, et cetera. You can see here, because I didn't choose the type for paint, this is not a job that has two-pack painted doors. These tasks have been automatically NA'd for me. And my recommendation is once you get used to the, the flow and of job man, is just tick that little box on there and now they'll always disappear. The reason why we don't just delete them and not bring them in is because we understand that jobs change life. So you might be in a position where this job does change. So you might want to un those tasks. And updating a job, even though it's been accepted with those types, is really easy. You can come into the job and even though right now I've just selected residential, if the client did change their mind and come back and say, actually, I'd like to see the two-pack painted doors, I can simply update that type, save changes, and those operations will now come back into my workflow. So now there is an allowance for that painting. So it's a really smart system. You know, it's, it's good at detracting and expanding at all times, but also really clever around making your life very easy. And you can see how, how fast, once the setup is done, how fast this is then to use on a day-to-day -day basis. It's a couple of clicks, and yet we're managing everything. All this data is now filling out to agenda screens. It's filling up your capacity. It's starting your job cost reporting, all from you know one little thing. I started lead management. I created a quote. I put some hours in and into my workflows. So the second part, which I was getting to with this, was the, the second way that, that Jobman uh, manages dates. And then, of course, target dates, critical dates. So target dates are mostly used for um, probably job management more than anything. And the advantage of target dates is if you have an operation that has a lot of time. In fact, let me show you live quickly. I know we're, we're sort of humming through this one, but I, I do want to show you because I think this is really important. This foundational key use of Jobman. So let's imagine... But I didn't do a quote, so I, I foolishly did not uh, jump into my job and quote. He says, oh, you haven't seen the webinar yet, so you aren't ready. And I have a job, and it's going to be 24 hours of install, and I only have one person available for that job. In my capacity settings, I think currently I've got one person is equal to 7.36 hours a day. So that means, in theory, this job should take about three and a half days. So the beauty of Jobman is I don't have to worry about that. Jobman can do all that for me. Set my target date. Let's make it the 31st of May. We're pretty confident we can get it in by then. Change this calculation to all tasks because I want to see all the dates before and all behind. I want Jobman to do its job. Hit save changes. Now what Jobman is going to do is it's going to take that critical date. It's going to set that as the target date. So that's the date it has to be done by. That's the fundamental difference between target dates and start dates. Target date is the date it has to be done by. Why is that important? Because this is going to take more than one day to complete. So what you can see automatically Jobman's done here is it's gone, okay, to get this in by the 31st, I actually need to kick off on the 28th. And it's a bit smarter than that. Jobman also takes uh, stock of things like if you tell it we don't work on weekends or public holidays, it won't factor those days into this. So if this happened to fall on, say, example, for example, a Monday, it would actually tell me I needed to start not on the 28th, it would be the 26th. because so I need three days to complete the job and I lose two days in the middle of that from the weekend. So it's really clever. The last thing, and I know this is going to blow your brain, that makes this system so incredible is whilst adding that time and doing that calculation, it's also taking stock of your capacity. So if I said to the client, Yes, and we're going to be covering capacity in another webinar down the track because it is, it is a very important key foundation of the software. But just so you see those links, like we showed you on those slides, operation, quote, you know, into the workflow, into the agenda screens, into your capacity, into your reporting versus your tasks. 
uh, onto your target calendars, that, that key foundation of that time in that capacity labour centre is if my installation was capped out on those on that week and I couldn't get this done, job man would extend these dates to start this job earlier to get it done by the 31st. And in fact, it's so smart that when it works these days backwards, it tells me when I need to kick this off to get it done by that date, all things being equal. Amazing. Couple of clicks. And you've just solved job management, capacity management, you know, which is the 99% the reason why people come to a, a job management platform like this, which is amazing. So that's the smarts behind the system. You set up the workflow, you tell it in, in the best case scenario how long we want these things to take. And then as your operational times pull from your quote, or as you could see there, you can update them live in the job as well. So if to begin with, you you, you know, you come into job man and today I want to solve this problem and my problem for my business is my job management and my capacity planning. Those are my big two top of mind problems. Okay, I've watched this webinar. Great. I can see there's a workflow there. I'm going to start building some jobs in. I'm going to put some allocated time into these operations. I don't know what they're going to be roughly. I've already quoted on them. And I can start running this flow and start building my capacity and start putting my dates in again. Day one. Day one with your software. Incredible. Amazing stuff. Love it. Absolutely love Game changer. And it will handle all that for you. No problems. Now, it is important to note, as always, you can override the information. We're not, never going to stop you taking on work. So if I was to set these dates, for example, and there's absolutely no way, and let's, let's show you that example. So let's change this target date. And I'm going to change it to uh, exactly five days from now. So we've been given the impossible situation. We've got this job. We need to get it done by that date. I put that in. <clears throat> Boom. In order to get that job done by this date, based on my current capacity with the current amount of operations needed to done, I would have needed to start this job a month and a half ago. So that shows you shows you how how our good job man is at, at doing the numbers for you. And the more data you give it, the more you start putting operational time, times in. And this is I say this to people very often: don't worry too much at the beginning if your workflow isn't perfect or you haven't got all the right operations. You know, make it really simple. Have four statuses. Uh, you know, start, manufacture, account, stop, and then put a couple of those key operations in, such as cut, assemble, install, um, and just begin there and see the benefit immediately. And this is huge. And then obviously the team will start measuring their time versus these operations. You know, I estimated this was going to be installed. Let's go test it, <laughs> you know, make sure that it gets done and, and start building that data and filling up that data. Um, awesome. And the other way, of course, you can use the job management system is you can come in instead the other way around and say, again, we can utilize these start dates, all tasks by hand, and if you're looking, if you don't know your average lead times at the moment, this is a great way of being really honest with your client base. Look, if we kick this job off today, we expect it to be in by about May 9th for you, all things being equal. And the client will look at you bewildered and go, that's amazing. How'd you know? I said, look, we've, we've got a, an incredibly intelligent system that really helps manage our business. Um, and this is what it does. And for the first time ever, as long as we keep everyone on track and these dates get met and everybody's working, awesome. Two last very quick things, and I'll dive into some questions for you. Um, First one is, okay, we've got this workflow. We've started running some jobs. Maybe you've completed um, a couple of tasks and it's starting to go. And you realize that there's this key foundational thing that you, you keep forgetting, maybe put on safety glasses. And it's like, oh, I've got to keep reminding the team to put on their safety glasses. Wouldn't it be easy if we just had that as a task? Absolutely. That's right. I remember I can put new tasks and operations to job man. I put that task in and I'm like, oh, I'd really like that to be available for all my current jobs, even though we're partly working our way through them. Not a problem. You can change and update workflow. And one of the beauties of this is there's a nice big warning that will come up just to let you know what's going on. So it's really clear. But one of the great things about this is I don't have to choose a different workflow although I can, if I've made changes to my standard default workflow, I can simply choose the same workflow again, hit save. It'll go through. It'll make any additions or changes that I put into this flow to update and improve my processes. And now I'm moving forward with my new latest and greatest flow. The other thing you can do is if you add a task in into a job, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to become part of every job flow. So you can have tasks independent of leads and jobs. Let's say in this job I needed to get um, some upholstery done, which is not something I normally do typically for my jobs, but I just happen to have this one job where they've made me build a be beautiful island seat uh, off to their side in their kitchen dining, and they'd really like it upholstered. 
can you organize that for me? Oh, no problems. I'll go get a quote, no dramas. So I can pop a task into here as part of the manufacturer, manufacturer, you know, go pick up upholstery and then assemble upholstery, two little tasks in, uh, link them to the operation for the, the manufacturing or assembly. And they won't affect my standard flows. They're not going to appear in every job. They're just for that job. So you can even put in live reminders and new tasks, um, which is awesome. Very flexible, really powerful, but really flexible. The last part is something I want to show you very, very quickly. It's not, not actually directly relational to um, this webinar, but I want you to see that information coming in live. So this is what I was talking about. Just by adding more jobs, adding information in, all of the, the parts of the system are starting to work. I'm starting to build my capacity. And these are the numbers job man uses to, to manage that flow, to see that time so we can start measuring those operations, um, which is fantastic. So awesome. Just double checking my list. Looks like we've covered everything, which is great. Uh, of course, this is, this is modifiable um, and changeable. So you can see what's going on across your business. You can start forecasting. You can see where you know, weekends and public holidays are being done. We'll do capacity in another webinar, but I just wanted to show you how easy it is to start pulling in that data and get job man running. This is not like a typical ERP where you've got to spend, you know, six to eight months of your life implementing the, the development of this software to start getting benefit. You can come in today and really fix that problem and, and start buying your back, yourself some time and managing your processes better and get the team involved and get everyone excited, get everyone back on track, on mission, seeing those critical dates, seeing these agenda screens fill up from these operation times. Um, you know, I've got a couple of jobs in there now, so I'm starting to see these dates come through. Information's coming up. I can see where everything's up to. I can already see straight away I'm behind on a job. Okay, let's get on top of that. Day one. Fantastic. All right, that's enough babbling from me. Um, thank you very much, as always, for uh, your time. Uh, if you've got enough out of this webinar and you're, you're happy to move on with your day, thank you uh, for, for joining us. As always, don't forget, there's the in-help and app help learning documentation. So a lot of the stuff we've discussed here today, you can go searching for, such as webinars, uh, sorry, such as workflows, operations, a lot of information there. Uh, there's videos on our YouTube outside of this webinar, which really help detail that information. Um, so please do, do check it out. And of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel so you're getting the most up-to-date information. Um, and if that's enough for you today, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it.